Hello, traders, market mavens, and curiosity seekers. Welcome back to another daily recap on the Ticks and Trades channel. Today is Monday, November 11, 2024. It's a few minutes in front of 8 a.m. Eastern currently. I'm Sam, and I trade the S&P 500 E-mini futures, mostly. You can check out the description below to learn more about what we do here, but the short answer is we identify levels of potential support and resistance in the SPY, which is what you see on the screen right now, and we use these levels to enter and exit trades in the E-mini futures throughout the open session. There is a process that we follow, but this approach takes a lot of the guesswork out of figuring out where price might go during the trading day. I'm concerned less with trying to nail down the big moves of the day and instead go for higher probability counter trend trades in places where the bulls and bears are likely to stage battles. The bulls are in control now, still. You can see what current price is in the pre-market up here, but there are opportunities on the board to pull e-mini points and dollars from the market if the SPY hits any of these levels the right way. After the closing bell, we'll come back to this chart and talk about any trades that may have been entered based on today's levels. Catch you on the other side. And about 12 hours later, we're back. Today was the first down day they've had in about a week. And not only did they stall out, they couldn't make it up to our level at 620 cents. As adjusted, it was hit, but it was before our 15 minute window. Anyway, they got pushed down just shy of hitting the exact number. So is that a crack in the armor? We'll look at some longer time frame charts as well as another ETF to see if we can develop a theory later. But first, were there any trades today? Yes, there were. If a trader were treating the levels like a process and following the rules that dictate how to manage them, there would have been at least one trade, but it did not happen until much later in the day. So leading up to the 15 minute window that I like to start looking for tradable opportunities, the SPY was under this level. So you would bring this level down toward price and they had already hit it here, just a couple pennies. So unfortunately, this is a little bit of a heartbreaker because that would have been a really good trade if you chose to short that level without waiting for the 15 minute window to open. I did not take this trade because it was too early for me. And unfortunately, it was one of those times where the level worked, but not in the manner that I prefer. So if you took it, I hope you pulled some points as price fell from there. It would have been a pretty good trade. The next possible trade would have been down at 598.22. That's as adjusted. But the market told you by virtue of this little near miss right here where they came within 10 cents of the level, of the operating level, the low was 598.29 at 12.51 p.m. That's within 10 pennies, 10 cents. They pulled up enough to give you a base hit had you taken the trade. So there's your near miss. You don't want to trust the level again. That was the way to treat this, and it kept you out of trouble because a long trade here would obviously not have worked out very well. So the only short trade you would have entered if you were treating this whole thing as a process was a short trade when they came back up into 598.12, as adjusted, for an attempt for what I call a recycled trade of the original level. Enough time had gone by, price is un underneath now. Things might be looking weak enough for this to be a retest and they could possibly fall lower, but they didn't really do that. The level is important as you can see, they just had no conviction either way for the rest of the open session. So no base hit, no fumble, you're still in this trade and they never really pulled down more than a point or so. So if you were in this trade waiting it out, what do you do? After they made several attempts to pull back and go lower, but they kept finding some type of support and bouncing, you could have jumped out at your entry point, settled for a point or two in the green or the red. But the official rule I have in rare cases like this, if nothing else is happening, then close out the trade at the market at 10 minutes before the closing bell. You're taking the chance that you might miss out on like a last second drop, a last minute drop that you've been waiting on here, because this could be a consolidation for them to go lower but you're also minimizing the chance that you'll be caught on the wrong side of the trade. If they happen to find a little rally at the end and drive price up, usually things start moving the last 10 minutes or so of the trading session. So jumping out of the market, the close of the 3.30 PM candle would have put you around maybe a point or so in the red. So basically a nothing day. That is unless you went short up at this level around 600 early in the day and rode that down. I know that there are a few traders who are following me who are doing just that, just trading the levels each time they're hit. I hope that approach is working for you. Today would have been a good day for that. So do we want to watch the recording of what happened in real time? I was recording until around a little after 1 p.m. or so, expecting to get into at least one trade. But after watching them fall from that 600 area, missing that trade there, I kind of lost interest, decided not to put any money at risk today. When they got down to the level at 598.17, I was away at lunch. I did have an order in down there. You'll probably see an order get put into the system at some point, but you know what happened already. 
let the recording go because when I got back from lunch, they were kind of down in this area. I already had a near miss, but I made the decision a long time before that that I didn't want to put any money at risk. So you can see this happen here. I made all the levels dotted. That's my indication that I'm done. So we pay attention to the time. So I'm pretty much away. I got back, I don't know, around one or so, almost one. I kind of hovered around like, so, so they had a near miss here, there. So I'm, I'm just wondering, just curious if they were going to come up and, and they eventually did come up and provide a base hit if you were long in this position, but that's your tell of why you should not have gone long. As we've already discussed, it was a near miss. So anyway, this just goes until quarter after or so, and that's pretty much it. So that recycle trade we talked about, I was not even around for that. The computer was already off. So here's the daily chart. Can we tell anything? Well, as I said, first down day in a while. They closed above the open of Friday. It doesn't really mean a whole lot, but you may recall on Friday talked about what could happen if for whatever reason we get a pretty big pullback and to give us a signal on the weekly chart. Before we look at the weekly chart, take a look at the IWM because they're in a lot different position than the SPY. They were up today. But where are they? Well, if we go to the weekly chart on the IWM, you can see that they are getting dangerously close to their all-time high here. So they should meet some type of overhead resistance at some point. And let's say that happens. Well, what would that do to the SPY chart? I'm not saying they're going to move in conjunction with each other, but if they come down all week in the SPY chart, then we have the signal we're looking for that's on time for a pullback that could take some time to develop, but that's the signal we're looking for. And then back on the daily chart, the time is also right, maybe tomorrow or the next day or so. If we had a signal on a daily candle that told us a trend change was coming, then we've got a few things to, to go on. But at this point, we really don't have a whole lot. I'm not saying anything's happening because clearly everything is like very bullish. So you don't want to fight the trend. So just want to point out some things just to keep in the back of your mind that could happen if we have some type of black swan thing, things fall. Then we'd probably have the signals we need for a trend change at least an interim trend change, down to maybe here at least, this little breakout area. But again, I'm not predicting that. I'm just pointing out some things to think about. On the tracking log, the first one is the PBR, playing by the rules, and you can read the notes of what happened that would have ended up giving you a negative one point, a fumble of a point or so, given back to the market and where you would have landed if you were trading one, two, three, or more contracts. Not a whole lot of activity. Uh, if you're strictly playing by the rules and then Nothing for me. No trades taken. This is the Sam's Trades Log. So that's a wrap for today's recap. I hope you found it helpful. Thanks for watching. I'll be back tomorrow morning with new levels. See if they do anything in the overnight session that gives us some clues. I might have a game plan. But in any case, we'll do it all over again. Thanks again for watching. See you in the next video. Have a great rest of your day.